It's April Davidson, and I'm back, and I have Nicholas Wildstar today. Hello. Very nice to see you. Very nice to see you. And so go ahead and tell me who you are. <laughs> well, I am Nicholas Wildstar. I'm a candidate running for mayor of Fresno. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I actually ran for governor of California twice. Oh, was, my goodness. Yes, I was the libertarian candidate um, in the 2018 election last year. And, um, of course, unfortunately, due to me being a, a third-party candidate, I was widely ignored by mainstream <laughs> media. So oh, no. I appreciate, you know... <laughs> outlets such as yours that give um, you know people such as myself an opportunity to be heard by the public because oh, of course. it is very rare so oh, of <laughs> thank course, you so definitely. much definitely yes we'd love to hear what you have to say uh, thank you so yeah last year I ran for governor of California and um, during my tour of the state I had a few stops here in Fresno and my wife and I we enjoyed the city tremendously very nice yes um, very nice <laughs> and we you uh, kind of get stuck here oh you do Fresno <laughs> is one of those places <laughs> is where if it invites you here once, you'll kind of be uh, stuck to come here one more time. Yes, least. definitely. But um, yeah, we ended up coming here a few more times after that, actually. And um, loved it so much, we chose to move here and start our family. So back in June, uh, we moved here and we had our first child. Congratulations. Our Thank you very much. Uh, so he was born and, and raised now in uh, Fresno. And um with me being someone that just cares about helping those in my community, um, of course, those that are less fortunate, but also the middle class, um, you know, business owners. Um, I see the need in the community. And with our elected officials, of course, that's their job is to fill that void, those desires of the community, whether it be, you know, improving the homeless situation or um, reducing the amount of violence or, you know, crime in our, in our neighborhood. So um, being someone, again, passionate about helping out those in my community. Once I moved here in Fresno, I chose to, you know, get involved with local politics. So I set my sights on the mayoral office. I see <laughs> uh, that. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm a big dreamer. <laughs> and, <laughs> Nothing uh, wrong with that. Nothing all, wrong with that. No. We need to be telling our children to I you know, agree. follow through with their dreams. I'm, I agree. Yeah. And so with the um, I saw I went ahead and I read your like bio. Right. And so I saw that there was a few issues on there. You just kind of brought a couple of them up. And so with like the issues, you were talking about gun control. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the homeless. Yes. You were talking about the peace officers. Absolutely. Did you want to explain some of that to us? Indeed. Yes. Uh, well, of course, with the homeless situation, that seems to be, um, you know, just booming statewide. And, it is, uh, yes, uncontrollably. I agree. Um, so I do think here in Fresno we have an opportunity to kind of set the pace on how to approach it in a more um, humane and civil way. Okay. And, of course, a um, less uh, <laughs> uh, in a more economical way, you know. Um, so uh, the state governor, actually, he just awarded us $11 million to, um, you know, deal with the homeless situation here. Oh, my goodness. And I didn't know that. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. We were just granted this money. And unfortunately, state officials still seem a bit lost as to how to, <laughs> you know, use it. Um, so uh, one of the things I offered during my gubernatorial race I would like to do here in Fresno, and that's build 3D printed homes. Um, okay. And there's an actual actual 3D printed machine. Oh my goodness! Uh, construction um, developers have built uh, where it will build a one bedroom, one bathroom home that is self sustainable. So it runs off of uh, solar power. It has its own plumbing and water system, and um, so. I this, want one. Uh, right. <laughs> I think everybody should have one of these. And I really believe that self-sustainable homes is the wave of the future um, because it, again, will uh, reduce the amount of cost for the homeowner, but as well as the global impact on um, our environment. Um, of course, we want to be utilizing technologies that aren't fossil fuels, more renewable energy. So this would set the trend towards um, that sort of, I guess, uh, um, 
evol- evolution of okay. humankind. Okay. Yes, very <laughs> uh, true. Indeed. So uh, we could start first with helping those that are living on the street and uh, building these one bedroom, one bedroom houses. This 3D printed machine can do this in less than 24 hours. Oh my God. For less than $5,000 each. Oh my goodness. So um, that 10, $11 million could go you know, very far. Very true. Um, so I'm offering to start out first with a small community of about 100. Okay. Uh, you know, for those that are living on the street that uh, are in need of immediate housing. Okay. Families with small children. Um, you know, we have a large population of teenagers, whether they are dealing with drug abuse or, you know, okay. kicked out of their homes, mm-hmm. or foster care for whatever reason. Um, and also our military veterans, you know, yes. who definitely do, do not deserve to be living on the streets after serving our country and um, serving us, we the people. Okay. So okay. Um, I really feel like this would be a great way to kind of, um, again, uh, provide immediate housing for those in need and it would be a long, long-term solution. Um, in addition to that, I think reducing the amount of um costs for builders to actually build affordable homes. Okay. <laughs> uh, licensing fees can be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what type of you know residential property that you'd like to build. So I would like to re- reduce that to zero. Okay. Yes, <laughs> uh, I, saw, I saw some of that on your website as well. Absolutely. Because yes. reducing the amount of cost for the builder, of course, is going to pass down those um, savings yes. on to uh, the renter or leasee. So okay. um, I, again, feel like that would be the best way to uh, ease regulations for business developers and business owners and um, allow more affordable homes to be built, not only for the, um, you know, for the homeless, but for the middle class as well, those that are living paycheck to paycheck, right? And, you know, and um, are threatened with possible homelessness themselves right um and of course we do have a large population of the middle class that would love to buy a home right know, okay. um, especially those in my generation you know <laughs> we seem to be um not afforded the same type of liberties that you know uh generations before us were so i would like to bring that back to some degree that liberty of being able to afford homes okay, okay. <laughs> and buy a home. And um, also uh, with regards to gun control, um, believe it or not, the majority of the arrests here in Fresno are due to weapons violations. Okay. So whether it be the person is in possession of an actual gun or in possession of uh, some other type of a weapon, believe it or not, collapsible batons are considered weapons oh. in the state of California. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, if you have one in the state of California, they are against the law. Oh, goodness. And if you get caught with one, in, uh, you will be charged with uh, possession of a weapon and, you know, <laughs> uh, have to serve a prison term for, for felony. Uh, and it is unfortunate. So uh, this does, of course, create some injustice in our criminal you know, justice system. So uh, to alleviate that altogether, I would like to get back to constitutional carry for the city of Fresno. And that means that everyone in the city of Fresno will be able to be in possession of a weapon in in accordance with our United States Constitution, uh, which says that you have the right to protect yourself and it shall not be a fringe. Now, um, I know a lot of people may frown upon that, (laughs) uh, especially with those that may support gun control. But any type of person that has done any small bit of research into, um, you know, uh, what is it, uh, violent situations involving guns or incidents, um, it always usually has happened when the person wasn't armed themselves or is in a gun-free zone. So if we allow those individuals, such as ourselves, to be able to be in possession of a weapon at any given time and have that be respected by our law enforcement, then we now only reduce the um, amount of um, arrest by police officers for being in possession of a weapon, but the actual attacks from, you know, um, from those that may pose a threat, a criminal. Uh, those that are involved in guns uh, or in gangs the main reason why they do have a gun 
um, is because they're they want to protect themselves. Okay. Uh, they are involved in the gang because they feel like that group itself will protect them. Okay. So it it has to deal with the mentality of them feeling threatened by someone from the outside. Take away that that uh, you know that threat, and now the person feels secure in their person and um, no longer has to live in fear. And that's what we want. And, of course, you know, women that want to have the opportunity to protect themselves, not only their bodies, you know, and their choices, uh, but, again, when threatened by someone from the outside. So, um, And uh, I really feel like it it will reduce the amount of police shootings of those, um, you know, people of color (laughs) uh, that tend to be in possession of a weapon and because they are seen as a threat, um, you know, are usually end up shot and killed by police officers. That's happened a numerous amount of times here in Fresno. Um, one of the recent shootings from 2017 of Isaiah Marietta Golding was a 16-year-old that was running from uh, Fresno police. He was believed to be in possession of a weapon, and he was shot in uh, in the back of the head by a Fresno PD officer. So, okay. um, again, if uh, his natural right to protect himself was respected, then the officers would have approached him in a different way. Okay. That's why I also feel like additional training should be included as well in that criminal justice reform or criminal justice system reform. Um, and um, pardon me, you said gun violence oh, <laughs> or actually, gun control. Yeah, gun control. And I mm-hmm. read that you said with the gun control that you suggested that there become some education on the safety of the gun. Absolutely. So that with the gun control, people know how to handle the guns. Exactly. I mean, if we're going to, again, give people the right to now protect themselves, if they want to go to a store and purchase a gun, they now can go to training seminars being conducted by officers. So now they have a trained professional providing them with training in our inner cities and in our communities, neighborhoods. Um, This will be open to the public, of course. And now they're getting that training from officers. And they have that, they are building that relationship with the community as well and and strengthening there. So now um, they trust their law enforcement opposed to seeing them as a threat also. Um, So that's eliminating another fear from the person's mind. Um, And um, I also feel like instilling a um, criminal, uh, pardon me, a um, civilian law enforcement agency would be uh, beneficial for the community as well because that would improve the relationship between law enforcement and those people of the community that, you know, feel the need to protect themselves and or people in the community. So now we can take those gang members and actually give them a badge. Um, And they're working hand-in-hand with police officers to actually keep people of the community safe. I think that would be a better... um, a, a better role, you know, for that individual opposed to them being seen as being a, um, a you know, a threat to society. And um, so with with the development, of course, I feel like, um, I guess, a marrying of the relationship between the police off, uh, the, the law enforcement agency and the civilian law enforcement would give those people that are maybe... Um, felons that are uh, not able to get gainful employment. Now they can get a job through the law enforcement, the civilian law enforcement agency, and have a pathway to the actual, uh, you know, law enforcement for the city. Um, So that's, again, giving that person an opportunity to get their, their life back on track as well. Yes, I read I read that you also thought that the police officers needed more training because you wanted them to be considered more like peace officers than Absolutely. police officers. Yes, indeed. Because they needed more training that way that they could be the better relationships with the people. Exactly. Okay, and so explain a little bit about that. Well, yeah, um, <clears throat> I've actually found out that a lot of, uh, uh, many of our officers have, um, I guess, uh, <laughs> old uh, beliefs on, you know, uh, engaging an individual. And, of course, when it comes to the training itself, 
they're told specific individuals are seen as a threat. Again, okay. the person in possession of a weapon. So uh, many of the officers themselves need to actually be given more weapons training themselves. Okay. Uh, so I think that actually needs to be a big part of it indeed. Um, but with regards to, um, I guess, taking that, uh, that relationship of training, uh, I think with regards to engaging more of the community and getting them involved would help um, alleviate the m many of the problems that we see between law enforcement and and you know our 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 people you know we yes. the people <laughs> yeah but uh, it's not really more to embellish I would say more than that but. Um, uh, main, more so the focus on the officers getting um, improved training where it's necessary. Definitely. Yeah. And then I also saw that you wanted to bring businesses back to Fresno. Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> and you wanted to do that with uh, some tax things. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah. explain a little bit about that. Eliminating a lot of the taxes. Okay. You know? Eliminating <laughs> a lot of the taxes. That would be great. I'd, well, love, I'd love to eliminate a lot of the taxes. <laughs> well, yes, especially what I was saying about the licensing. Not yes, only when yes, it comes the to licensing. building, um, but for businesses that want to start a business, you know, it, it, exorbitant fees, again, apply there as well. So if we can eliminate the business fees, licensing fees, permit fees, zoning fees, um, et cetera, then that would give those um, businesses more of an opportunity to flourish, especially those um, that l don't have the startup costs, you okay. know, <laughs> okay. yeah. or are unable to obtain that through um, means of a loan through a financial system, okay. which okay. is another proposition of mine, which is to create a People's Bank of Fresno. That, yes, I saw that too. All right, okay, great. explain that. Yeah, well, what I would like to do is create a People's Bank of Fresno, which would not be part of the uh, federal banking system. Okay. <laughs> Therefore, it would be able to uh, conduct business using all currencies, and that would be cryptocurrency, that would be gold, silver, precious metals, etc. Um, so you would be able to take these um, these items okay. into the bank and actually make financial transactions. This would also be beneficial to the cannabis industry here okay. in Fresno. Okay. Um, you know, these are legitimate businesses that unfortunately don't have the means to go to an actual bank and open a bank account because of federal regulations. So with the People's Bank of Fresno, they'd now be able to go into the bank and deposit those funds okay. and have them be safe and secure in that facility. Um, the other two sides of a bank, how they work, <laughs> is one, they take your money, and okay. two, they give your money to other people. Uh, yes. okay. <laughs> so in taking that money from the cannabis industry, they can now give interest-free loans to okay. those um, people that I said that are turned away from the larger banks. Um, and now are able to get that loan from the People's Bank of Fresno, interest-free. Okay, um, okay. And hopefully that'll give them the, you know, startup costs that they need to get that business off the ground. Uh, and that's what I would like to see, an opportunity for more smaller businesses to be able to develop and grow and um, compete with some of the larger businesses, you know, allow the doorway for free enterprise to be kicked open wide. Okay. And that's what I believe would be more beneficial to us as consumers as well, because if we have more competitors, then the less, uh, the more the cost goes down, the less okay. it is for us. Uh, so eliminating those business fees, those uh, startup costs, et cetera, would definitely help. And part of my, what I'm calling Fresno First Initiative is building that uh, People's Bank of Fresno. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, and then I also read that you wanted to do something about the energy. Yes, indeed. Part of that uh, Fresno First initiative okay. <laughs> is also creating our own public utility here in Fresno. So this would be a um, water and power company where we would be um, utilizing uh, sustainable technologies such as solar power, wind power, hydroelectricity, etc., uh, to create our own electricity and power the homes and businesses here in the city. Um, if we 
outfit the city to where we're able to now um, do so, you know, using one expense, tax expense, now everyone in the city will be able to live uh, electric free. Okay. You know? And that would be great because I think, of course, oh, pardon me, <laughs> those um, <laughs> people that are having troubles paying utility bills won't ever have to pay an electric bill ever again. Um, and um, also with the water, uh, what believe it or not, <laughs> there's other technologies that exist. It's called an atmospheric, uh, atmospheric water generator. Okay. So it's a machine that literally uh, makes water out of thin air. And um, it can do this to the tunes of hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, hundreds of thousands of gallons of water. So it wow. can it can create this water, and again, we'll have our own water. We'll okay. have to pay any water, and we can pay off any excess or um, sell off any excess water or power to those businesses, larger businesses that may need extra, and or cities or states that may want to purchase it from us. So now we actually have a, a commodity here in Fresno that we're selling off. And the taxpayers, since they funded the whole operation, would be the benefactors of it. So okay. then, in, and then we'd be able to possibly put in place a universal basic income if wanted and or tax kickbacks to you know anyone Very and everyone nice. that wanted them. Mm, <laughs> or okay. we can say, yeah, I don't want the money, and the money goes <laughs> into the people's Bank of Fresno. There see, you go. To okay. again be paid for to those in need. Very nice. Um, also part of my Fresno First initiative, I would like to create a um, a more, um, what is it, state-of-the-art uh, public transportation system. Yes, I've yeah. read about that too. Yeah, it's been long you overdue. Were, you were comparing it to, um, you wanted it to compare it to, um, where was it that you said it was... There was a really good transportation. Shanghai. Yes. yes. Okay. Shanghai. Okay. They actually have a maglev train system. Um, and, of course, this state-of-the-art train system can be, a, can be built um, affordably. Okay. And uh, once it is built, again, we'll have a um, transportation system that will uh, increase the amount of, you know, um, credit. Here in the city, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but believe it or not, but your uh, tax rate for your home, it is actually cr uh, connected to the credit rate of the city. So the more you have to pay in property taxes is actually connected to the city value. So if we can improve the credit score for the city, now you are paying less in property taxes. Okay. Um, so okay. if we could, again, beautify the city, which is another part of what <laughs> yes, I would like I to do Yes, I read here. that too. <laughs> yes, is uh, build more... Uh, community gardens, those are not here in Fresno since oh, yeah. we have a large agricultural uh, industry, but no community gardens, no sidewalk gardens, um, something that, uh, you know, runs rampant in Orange County where my wife and I moved from. That's right. So you guys did move like from there. like to see more of that here in Fresno, more parks. And um, again, giving us an opportunity to move to and fro in many ways would be better. This maglev system would be great. Um, the Boring Company by Tesla um, is actually an underground tunnel system that will okay. allow you to bypass traffic. So while we have um, you know problems on the freeways here in 99 and 41, et cetera, we'd be able to build these tunnels underground that will connect you from one part of the city to the other. You drive down, put your car on this uh, you know sled, and it... Drives through the city at like 300 miles per hour, get you over from one point to the other. <laughs> and uh, hey, and again, we'll reduce traffic here as well. And um, I think um, Fresno has an opportunity to create an even greater history. You it know, sounds it, like it. You it, have a lot of goals. Oh, thank you so much. It has a wonderful foundational history, a traditional history here in Fresno. And uh, the way that we can modernize that and again, set the pace for the future because, as the saying goes, so goes California, so goes the rest of the nation. <laughs> so uh, if we can lead the way here in Fresno and show the rest of the state of California how we can alleviate, you know, the, um, the issues that the majority of us deal with, um, especially from our government, <laughs> yes. then we could um, uh, hopefully lead the trend to start getting other states 
to follow that path and again um, create the uh, foundation for the utopian society that we're we're all wanting and desiring from humankind. Okay, okay. I mean, because we do want that, a better place for us to live, happily, peacefully, joyfully, you know. And, Definitely. Um, it has to start first with the inspiration and motivation to do so. We can't be so jaded by what has happened in the past that, to think that it can never happen. You know, if we want to tell our children it can happen and to start working on that future, then we have to lead the way as adults ourselves and, and um, you know, be the trendsetters and the pioneers for that. I agree. So yeah. I'm hoping to do so as the next mayor of Fresno with okay. my Fresno First Initiative. Um, it's part of what I'm calling my gold new deal since I am a libertarian. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, uh, this is part of, of ways for us to, again, become more green efficient. Uh, yet at the same time, we the people are benefiting from it, opposed to uh, larger corporations, you know, have who have you know, always benefited from it. So if we want to uh, shift the, um, I, I guess, uh, the capitalistic nature of, uh, of corporatism, you know, then we have to be able to be, benefact be benefactors of our, um, our resources, you know, and our land, our, our food, our water. You know, uh, we sell off these commodities to corporations. If not, they take them, you know, and we don't get anything because of it. You know, um, what is it? The company uh, Niagara, they just got discovered for poisoning ars uh, the water here in California with arsenic. Oh, you know, good. so. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> And, uh, Yum! <laughs> yeah, and you have companies like Nestle siphoning off hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, fresh water, and selling it back to us mm -hmm. as bottled water. <laughs> is um, it tap water or yes. what is it? <laughs> and we get nothing because of it, you know? So uh, something's got to change somehow, okay. you know? And um, again, I feel like if we want to be pioneers for that, then we have to start first with our elected representatives, you know, since they are the ones that we're choosing and selecting to be representatives of we the people, mm -hmm. you know, if, if they're um, getting on stage and they're um, speaking in interviews about what we want, then we need to see them come to fruition. They have term limits for a reason, okay? Stop letting these people get off the hook, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Two years should not turn into 12 years. Okay. To turn into 20 years, okay? Okay. If it's not done within the first few years, okay? And that's what I'm offering as okay. a representative is if I'm not able to do the job within the first two years as a public representative, I will step down. Okay, okay? you heard him. I will step you heard down. Him. Okay. <laughs> um, that's what he said. Especially if you guys call me and say, Wild Star, you, you, you <laughs> suck. <laughs> you didn't do anything you said you wanted to oh, do. Oh, there you go. Or you would do. So, yeah, first things first. Um, what I am offering to do as a representative is reduce the amount of costs for, um, you know, residents of Fresno. And uh, we are paying a lot of money for our public representatives. We have over 800 city employees that get paid six-figure salaries. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, believe it or not. And, I mean, the median income here in Fresno is about $30,000. So there isn't any reason why they should be getting paid that amount of money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we have uh, f fired um fire uh, office chiefs that get paid a quarter million dollars a year. They aren't firefighters, you know, they're the fire office chief. So, wow. yeah, I would rather see the firefighters get paid, mm -hmm. you know, the, that $100,000 a year. So that's what I'm offering to do for our um, emergency employees is give them a base salary of $100,000 a year for officers and, um, you know, uh, fire personnel. And uh, with city employees such as myself, I will be reducing my own salary to sixty thousand okay. uh, dollars, since the uh, mayor's salary is almost two hundred thousand okay. dollars. So I'll be taking a pay cut to do the job, okay. <laughs> and I will be um, again uh, adopting this as policy for any new city official okay. moving forward. I would like to also eliminate the unfunded liabilities, the amount of. Um, money that we're paying out for pensions for city uh, retired city 
um, employees. Okay. That tends to be in the amount of six figures as well. So if we could uh, stop passing on that bill of debt to us and okay. our children, you okay. know, and our children's children's children, <laughs> then that would be great. So one of the first ways we could do that is by stopping the bill. Okay. And um, it, if we can pay off all of those individuals that are on, um, you know, retirement now, give them a chunk of money. Now they know what they're working with. Right. Opposed to it being undetermined and um, being under threat. I okay. I speak with a lot of retired, you know, um, city employees and that's what they tell me is they just want to know how much it, it, that they're going to be working with, you know, mm -hmm. um, since this is now their only source of income uh, for some right. of them, you know. Um, so eliminating that cost there would definitely help. And uh, unfortunately, what we've seen with our law enforcement is, like what I was saying with the uh, shooting of Isaiah Murrieta Golding, is it leads to lawsuits against the city to where now, um, you know, there's wrongful death lawsuits or um, racial discrimination lawsuits against the city mm -hmm. cost the uh, city it's residents, us, we the people, right. <laughs> uh, okay. hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay. Uh, and this new, um, you know, shooting, of course, is going to lead to a civil suit and it's going to be tens of millions of dollars. And we're actually approaching the red here in Fresno. So I would like to turn the curb on the budget here, so we're now we're instead of us possibly going bankrupt, we're now making money and okay. able to pay off the debt, pay off the debt we accrued, and start building some surplus here. Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Great. Yeah. I hope you guys like it as well. <laughs> I think I think I could talk your ear off of forever, <laughs> and so is hers. Though. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share today? Absolutely. Um, the one thing I would say is, of course. Uh, with the long standing of uh, traditions here in Fresno, is uh, um, a lot of relationships, long standing relationships. And the people running for office, they have great reputations um, as well as bad ones. Okay. You know, uh, it, people of the community know about their good deeds as well as the bad ones. So I ask that that be taken in con into consideration okay. when choosing your public representatives. And with me being a newcomer, uh, all I can say is uh, I have the best ears and eyes to tell you, those longstanding residents of Fresno, uh, what's exactly missing here in the city. And I'd be happy to do all in my power as your um, representative <laughs> of We the People, as the next mayor, to improve all of those conditions. So um, I'm asking everyone out there to please visit my website, wildstar2020.com. Um, wildstar2020.com. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can't say it enough, I, I can't right? say it enough because say again, it again. <laughs> I, I, wildstar2020.com. <laughs> there we go. All, all right. Even got a plug up there. Yep. So, <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, yep. that's Love my it. website. That's your so, website. So, yeah, when well, you go there, it'll look just like that that's because, right. like I said, I, I don't get much, much exposure from the mainstream media. <laughs> and, um, it, and I need you. I need you. I need your voice. I need your people power. And um, that's what this election is all uh, going to be about, is your power, your voting power, your abilities to get back the powers that have you've lost with government. The one thing that I actually propose or, or actually put out there on, um, on my flyers is my mission statement, letting people know, take back your power. You know, I speak with a lot of people, and that's what they say is they feel like their vote don't matter. Okay. So they don't want to go out and vote, you know, because they don't feel like either the system is going to do what, you know, they say they're going to do once they get elected, or if they vote, you know, um, it's going to go down the drain anyway. So this is an opportunity for you to flex that uh, vote, <laughs> that voting power, and actually have it count, have it make a difference, and have it make those changes that you want and, and desire from your community, from our community. Okay, you hear it. You heard it. <laughs> Nicholas Wildstar. Hello. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank I you so much. I can't wait to have you again. I would love to come back anytime. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, thank you. And thank you Have to a great all of you. evening.